The screen opens on a sterile laboratory. White coats, humming machines, microscopes, and oscilloscopes glowing under fluorescent light. In the center, behind a glass partition, sits a black box no larger than a suitcase. Cables run from it to a rack of high-power resistors, each glowing orange from heat. Narrator, calm, intense. For decades, scientists said it was impossible, a device that could pull vast amounts of usable power from thin air. But then came a sealed report, stamped confidential, with three words no one thought they'd ever see. Device verified functional. The discovery. Weeks earlier, Max Welchikombutso walked into a private energy lab carrying a weathered metal case. Inside was his now famous invention, a unit capable of generating 5,000 kilowatts of electricity from ambient radio waves. Maxwell, I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm asking you to test it. The lab director, Dr. Elaine Richter, was skeptical. We've seen dozens of these so-called free energy machines. None of them worked. Maxwell smiled faintly. Then this one will be your first. The test begins. In a soundproof test chamber, the device was connected to industrial-grade meters and load banks. No external cables, no fuel source, no battery, just the device itself and a telescoping antenna reaching toward the ceiling. Dr. Richter's assistant flipped the main switch. Instantly, the load banks lit up, fans spun, and power meters climbed steadily. 500 kilowatts, 1,000 kW, all the way to 5,000 kilowatts. The readings held steady. No fluctuations. No drop in output. Dr. Richter stared at the numbers, silent. Is this real? Whispered one of the technicians. Unexpected reading. But something strange happened. The spectrum analyzer, which was meant to detect incoming energy signals, showed multiple high-frequency spikes, far stronger than any normal background radio noise. Dr. Richter leaned closer to the display. This isn't just harvesting existing radio waves. It's amplifying something, pulling from a deeper source. Maxwell only nodded, saying nothing. The sealed report. After three days of continuous operation, the device still showed no sign of slowing down. The lab compiled their data into a 47-page report, efficiency graphs, thermal analysis, electromagnetic readings, and stamped it with the words device verified functional. But before the report could be released, the lab received a call. Not from the media. Not from investors. From a number Dr. Richter recognized instantly. A government liaison she hadn't spoken to in years. The intervention. The next morning, two men in dark suits arrived at the lab. They asked for all raw data, the device itself, and Maxwell's contact information. Their tone was polite, but absolute. When Dr. Richter hesitated... One of them slid an envelope across the table. Inside was a non-disclosure agreement and a check with more zeros than she had ever seen. We can make this disappear, the man said quietly. Or we can make you disappear. Your choice. Maxwell's move. That night, Dr. Richter met Maxwell in a quiet cafe on the edge of town. She slid a USB drive across the table. This is everything. The raw readings, the logs, the report. They think they have the only copy. Maxwell looked at her, surprised. You risked everything for this. No, she said firmly. I risked everything for the truth. The upload. Back in his workshop, Maxwell connected the USB drive to his offline laptop. His fingers flew over the keyboard as he began encrypting the files into thousands of data fragments, ready to be sent across multiple hidden servers. Outside, rain poured against the tin roof. In the shadows across the street, an unmarked black sedan waited, its engine idling. The watchers move. Inside the sedan, a man wearing a headset spoke into a mic. Target is active. He's transferring data now. Maxwell's laptop screen showed 42% complete. Outside, a faint beam of light swept across the workshop window. A handheld scope. He froze for a second, then continued typing faster. The interrupt. Suddenly, his internet connection dropped. Not a slow disconnection. A hard cut, as if the entire local network had gone dark. Maxwell's jaw tightened. He reached for a secondary uplink device, a small, battery-powered transmitter capable of jumping signals across encrypted mesh networks. 
He plugged it in. Connection restored. Upload resumed. But now the sedan's doors opened. Two men stepped out, walking with deliberate pace toward his door. The escape route. Maxwell yanked a hidden lever under his workbench. A section of the floor creaked open, revealing a narrow crawl space lined with tools and cables. He grabbed the black box device, the USB drive and the transmitter, lowering himself into the space. Above him, heavy boots thudded against the wooden porch. Mr. Chikambutso, we need to talk. Cat and mouse. From below, Maxwell could hear the creak of the door as it was forced open. The men moved slowly, methodically, checking each corner of the workshop. His transmitter beeped once. Upload 89% complete. He held his breath, praying the signal wouldn't give him away. The intercept. Then, just as the upload hit 100%, one of the men froze. You hear that? he whispered. They stepped toward the section of floor above Maxwell's head. He clenched the black box tight. If they found him, this might be the last night he'd see daylight. Unexpected distraction. Before they could move the trap door, headlights swept across the workshop. A motorcycle roared into the yard, and on it was Dr. Richter, helmet visor down. Maxwell, now, she shouted. The men turned, momentarily distracted. Maxwell shoved open the floor hatch, rolled out, and sprinted for the bike. The chase. Rain slicked the road as they sped into the night, the black sedan now in pursuit. Maxwell clutched the transmitter to his chest, knowing the encrypted proof had already been seated at dozens of secure locations around the globe. Where are we going? he yelled over the engine. Somewhere they can't follow. Yet, Dr. Richter replied. The safe drop. They pulled into an abandoned radio relay station outside the city. Inside, rows of old transmitters stood silent, dust-covered. Maxwell connected his device to one of the still-functioning antenna systems. We're going to broadcast the truth, he said, determination hardening his voice. Dr. Richter checked the road outside. No lights, no engines. Do it fast. We may not have long. The broadcast begins. Maxwell's fingers danced over the dusty console as he rerouted power from the black box into the old transmitters. The station hummed back to life, indicator lights flickering in sequence. Signal boosted now, he muttered, on his laptop. Encrypted files from the lab, high-res photos, power graphs, signed verification documents, queued for release. But this wasn't just an upload. Maxwell was injecting them into open broadcast frequencies that would piggyback on existing radio and satellite signals. The world receives it. In the span of seconds, the data began to leak everywhere. Newsrooms in London, New York, and Johannesburg saw their teleprompter feeds glitch, replaced by the lab's verified test results. On trains, car radios, and even old analog TVs, a flashing title appeared. Maxwell to Kombutso. Device verified. 5,000 kilowatts from ambient radio waves. The countermeasure. 20 kilometers away, inside a control room filled with glowing monitors, a man barked orders into a headset. Kill that signal. Now. Satellite jamming arrays pivoted toward Maxwell's location, flooding the airwaves with white noise. Inside the relay station, Dr. Richter's eyes widened as static crackled through the speakers. They've locked. Onto us, she warned. Pushing through, Maxwell glanced at the power levels. The black box was holding steady, delivering enough juice to overpower the jammers for now. We've got two, maybe three minutes, he said. He hit the final transmit key, sending the entire archive to a network of volunteer servers across dozens of countries. The arrival. Suddenly, the sound of tires screeching echoed outside. Through the rain street glass, Dr. Richter saw multiple vehicles pulling up Headlights slicing through the darkness. Maxwell, they're here. Boots splashed through puddles. Doors slammed. The low metallic click of weapons being ready carried in the wind. Maxwell looked at her. We're out of time. Final stand. The pounding on the relay station's metal doors grew louder. One last burst. Maxwell said, sliding the transmitter to maximum output. The old tower outside groaned as a surge ripped through it sending the verified data farther than any conventional signal could. The black box vibrated in his hands. It wasn't designed to push this much power for this long. 
Sparks flew from the console. The smell of burning dust filled the room. Breakthrough. On the other side of the planet, independent scientists stared at their screens in disbelief. The files were real, signed, sealed, and digitally time-stamped. Maxwell's device wasn't theory anymore. It was proven undeniable. Online forums exploded. Hashtags trended in dozens of languages. And just like that, the story could never be buried again. The sacrifice. The relay station doors crashed open. Black-clad figures stormed in, rifles raised. Hands where we can see them. Maxwell looked at Dr. Richter, then at the console. The upload timer hit 100%. He smiled faintly. It's already gone. Before they could reach him, he yanked a breaker switch. The room plunged into darkness. The aftermath. Hours later, the station was empty, stripped bare. But across the globe, mirrored servers, offline backups, and countless downloads kept the data alive. Maxwell Chikumbutso was nowhere to be found. Some claimed he fled to a hidden lab in the mountains. Others whispered he'd been taken. But in cities everywhere, small workshops began buzzing with activity. Engineers, hobbyists, and curious minds were building their own versions of his device. Guided by the blueprints, he'd risked everything to release. The world would never be the same again. And somewhere in the hum of the airwaves, his signal still lingered. 